this past week's pickups episode number eight so in this video I'm going to show what I've been buying on com C so I bought three ports this past week so what that is I'll show what that is first so we have in the middle of the page here we have promotions and port sales now I'm going to click on port sales and we're going to look at this what I like to do here in the top left is look at recently posted because most of these have been up here for a while and what these are is someone is selling their entire inventory now the inventory could be their whole store or it could be like specific sports like if we look at this one here right in the middle it says football so that's probably only going to be football they might have other things listed but they're just selling their football cards so that might be their whole store but um, so what I've done is go through this past week and try to find what are the best deals on here if it's worth me buying these <clears throat> and you know what I can realistically pay for something and try to at least double my money triple my money you know it, when you're buying this kind of thing you're buying someone's inventory you're going to be sitting on quite a bit of it for quite a while so you want to make sure what you're buying is in general are those things in this port gonna sell and a lot of people have things that are overpriced or whatever to begin with you know so you're realistically you're not gonna to want to pay more than probably 30% so like there's an example of a you know a Clayton Kershaw rookie priced at $65 you know and the low end ones are around 30 you know so you obviously you're not going to be able to pay anywhere near that if you're gonna buy someone's whole port and expect to do well on it at all so you know if we if we look at this seller here what I would do is okay he wants nine hundred dollars let's look at the first few cards these are the highest price cards we already saw that this Clayton Kershaw was way overpriced so I'm not even really gonna look at anything else in general everything is going to be overpriced but you can send an offer say if you wanted to send that if I wanted to send him an offer let's just say we'll send him an offer for one hundred dollars well it's too low the minimum is seven hundred dollars that this seller has on it he's not gonna get anywhere near that I mean let's be realistic here so you know the point for him to even try to sell for that person to try to sell it is not really realistic okay so what I'm gonna show here now let's go to my dashboard and let's look and see what I actually bought so what I'm going to do is go here in the top <clears throat> of my dashboard is my things that I need attention on. Those are things that I haven't priced. Either I haven't priced them or I haven't put them as wanting to ship to myself. So if we look here on the right, we can add to shipment. That's things I'm going to ship to myself. Now those kind of things I would just try to resell at a card show as I've talked about in my previous videos so the first port here these first cards here probably 50 cards or so were from one port that I bought the first port and what I paid was $300 now most of the stuff was just total garbage you know you look at I don't know what these first cards are going for probably a couple dollars but like these cards here it says I paid for two cents you know and they're selling for four cents you know 10 cents or selling for two cents so if you look it's gonna give you an estimated price on what you paid for it based on the percentage of what um, per card per you know they figure out the percentage that you're actually kind of paying for you but you paid an overall price for the whole port so since I paid three hundred dollars it's gonna take like these percentages it's kind of gonna just break it up here and you know it says six cents so I did to clean it up a little bit there was a whole bunch of this kind of stuff I 
I posted some of it already just to kind of clean it up a little bit. And some of them sold already for a penny or two. You know, obviously I'm not going to be making any money off these. You know, there's a few cards, you know, that I might be able to do okay on. You know, that one's going to sell for, I'll just price it for one cent less. So it says I bought it for a dollar fifty. So if we click on this link here, it's going to bring up all these cards that are here. They're definitely selling 195 have sold this quarter alone. So they're definitely going to sell. This card is definitely going to sell for 74 cents. So I'll I'll just list it. You know, I'll take a little loss on it there. But realistic, it, you know, I, I wasn't buying this port. I was only buying it for essentially one card, which I'll get to here. So these other ones I'll just price out here. This one, 50 cents I paid for it. I'll just post it for one cent less than it's selling for. 29 cents. And there's a few other cards. There's some actually a few cards in here that I'll get five or ten bucks out of. Here's one here. So it said I paid $58. Now, I don't know hockey at all, but it said I paid $58 for this card. Looks like I can probably sell for $19.74 I'll put. So basically, now let's click on it again. It's going to show up here at some point. Oh, there it is. So let's go back here. For some reason, it's adding a dollar on. I don't know why that is. So let's go 1874. It might be because it's a brand or relatively new card here. So let's see. Actually, yeah. all right. So we're going to price it at 1999. So there it is. Shows up 1999. Now it should sell for that. But again, hopefully it does. Uh, you know, I might keep my eye on it. If it doesn't, I'll just mark it down. Some other golf cards here. You know, these are nothing. They're not worth anything. I'll get 10 cents a piece or something out of them. But so let's scroll down. Here's another card. You know, it's going to get me three bucks. Says I paid 15 for. But let's scroll down here. There was a LeBron James in here too. A decent card. So, but the actual card that I wanted. Keep scrolling down. There was a bunch of just kind of oddball stuff in here. I'm guessing that this collect this person was just a collector, or maybe they were trying their hand at flipping and it didn't work out for them, or they they were just trying to collect and just gave up on it. That would be my guess on this. But let's go to the last card here. So I paid three hundred dollars for this port, and the reason why was this card. So this is a Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, a rookie. You see right here, 1980, 81 tops. Actually, it looks like it's in really good shape. It looks like it would probably grayed out as a PSA 6. There's some printing marks here maybe, but, you know, maybe in here. The corners look sharp. The back looks nice. Maybe a little bit of, tiny bit of staining over here. But honestly, I'll, I'll probably have this one sent to me, and I'll either try to sell it at a show, or I will, you know, at some point send it in the PSA. So that was the first port, 300 bucks. There was probably 100 cards in there. Most of them weren't worth anything. But, you know, if I get $50 for, or so, 40 or 50, probably that's what I'll get, minus this card which in this condition, I don't even know. It's probably close to a $800 card, I'm guessing. Just ungraded, seven or $800. So beautiful card right there. Really, you know, pretty happy to get that. That Now the seller wanted $700 for their port, which is probably what, it, what the whole thing was worth. But he took an offer. I sent an offer of 200 refused that. The next day, I sent an offer for three, and he took it. I was pretty surprised, actually. But so let's get on to the next one. The next one was a big port, so it was around. It was over fourteen hundred cards. I paid twenty five hundred dollars for it. So you know, quite a bit of money. 
but <clears throat> just in looking through it when I was I, I took quite a while to think about if I if it was worth me buying or not I'm just scrolling through here there's gonna be you know over I marked some of the stuff already but there's still over 1200 cards in here from this port so we'll go to the next page <clears throat> so we got 100 cards each page so let's let's increase that to 500 and take a look there was a lot of vintage in here there was 50s tops there was play ball 1940 1939 so there was you know there wasn't a lot of stuff like high dollar stuff I mean for example we have these 1957 tops you know hits stars you know and it, it'll say what I paid for it so I paid a dollar 32 for it you know I I would think this would sell for four or five dollars you know so what I'm looking to do is three to four times what I paid for it that's what I probably got a market as here's one that was you know rougher it was 79 cents now some of this stuff I'm gonna send to me and I'll put it in my boxes that shows you know that's gonna sell for two bucks I'm, I'm sure of that so that, like something like that I'll just go over here and add it to my shipment it's gonna go it's gonna come to me in my next shipment back to my house so um, you know there's just a lot of older stuff like here's a bazooka card I might have that shipped to me also because I think these generally do pretty well people look for this kind of oddball older stuff when they're collecting sets they kind of I've seen that quite often when people look for that kind of stuff at shows they ask specifically for checklists and contest cards and things like that so I'll just scroll through this stuff briefly so probably you know there was over 1400 cards I'll probably have say 300 of these sent um, it's a lot of it is stuff like this so we have a you know a Browns team card and you know they're selling for a buck let's say the the lowest one is a dollar on here and what I paid for it was 26 cents now I'll probably list it at 99 cents they're selling you know it, it's in fair shape it's decent you know I think it'll sell as long as I'm listing it at the lowest low end you know 99 cents you know that's four essentially four times my money three and a half once I get charge a five percent fee Here's another card, 66 cents, selling 350 to 450. But you know this stuff is going to take forever to sell. You know some of it will sell immediately, some of it will sell in a, within a few days, but most of it is going to take quite some time. Here's a a nice Redmond tobacco. I think that's probably around a 15 to 20 dollar card there. And if you look, I paid five dollars for it, so I would hope to get. You know, I'll probably price it at 16 or something like that. You know, and there was a lot of, there's a lot of red mans here. There's, you know, those will be five to ten a piece. Here's a nice double play card, pretty nice shape on that one. And that was 657. So I'll probably get 15 out of that, I would guess. These are kind of nice. These are 1944 Yankee stamps. They're in nice shape. Paid a dollar fifty-nine for it. I'll probably get five out of it. So, but again, I'm looking to add. Here's a Redman with a actual tab on it. Those are pretty hard to find. That'll sell no problem for probably fifteen. Here's another one. You know, and it, it said I paid just a couple bucks a piece for those. Two sixty-five. You know, so you hope to sell some of this kind of stuff pretty quickly. You know, get some money. It's going to take me time to list all this stuff and go through and check on condition. Here's our Ichiro rookie, which those have to be selling, right? 163 in four years, so they're selling. Should be able to get 13 bucks for that, no problem. There, I paid 
398, so that'll be a good return on that. Here's a Jim Bunning, that was a nice autograph. PSA DNA, I think I'd get 2530 out of that. Paid eight on that. There's a few PSA cards in there. Some of these will do pretty well. The 64 top stand-ups. Those will do well. Those will probably go for around 20, 15 to 20 a piece. Some coins, some a lot of oddball stuff, stuff that I would normally buy, buy at a show and send in myself. So that's kind of the other reason why I bought this particular port. Just see a bunch of vintage, a bunch of vintage football now. A lot of them are just lower dollar cards. But if I'm paying 34 cents, say for example, for this, selling it for say a dollar twenty-five, you know, a card like this. These are going to be actually more difficult to find on Com C because it's costing you fifty cents. Well, you can't you can't make any money, you know. So it's better for me. It's cheaper for me. I don't have this card. I don't need to have it. I have it. I bought it in this port for less than it would cost for me to send it in and have them process it. So 34 cents, you know, it's just better for me to try to buy a whole a whole port. Here's a Bob Lilly that was 66 cents. Like, you know, that's a really good deal. I mean, something like that, either you're going to sell on my Com C store or I can have it shipped to me and it'll sell at a show for a couple bucks. So a whole bunch of football here. Again, these were, you know, 26 cents, 34 cents. 26 cents. And there's some, there's a Herb Adderley rookie card, 64. <clears throat> so it says I paid 318 for it. You know, they're selling for 13, 13 bucks. Probably no problem on that one. Some more vintage 59 tops football, 57, you know, 39 cents, 26 cents, 31 cents. 39 cents you know they're not they're not great condition but they're not bad you know they're, they're sellable they will definitely sell and there was quite a bit of hockey on here also so that was another reason I don't have a lot of hockey Guy Lafleur Hall of Famer dollar 19 on that one looks like it's gonna sell for five there's a Don Cherry that's his rookie um, there's a higher card there higher dollar card there so there's a few cards like that in there in this lot there's a tony esposito you know that was two dollars looks like they're selling for around 10 and there was a bunch of star wars here too so so a lot of oddball a lot of hockey a lot of just vintage stuff 70s 60s 50s you know, lower price stuff, but stuff that will definitely sell for people that are putting uh, sets together. It's easy just to come on here and buy the cheapest one. You know, if it's halfway decent in VG condition, okay, 26 cents for that card, you know, it's going to sell for 56 cents. All right, so, you know, again, I'm not making a ton on that kind of stuff, but here's a high number, Tops, Hal Smith pretty nice shape you know decent and that'll sell for probably you know they they sell this one here is 17 they sell a lot you know there's only one listed that's gonna I'm gonna get probably 15.99 off of that so basically you know three and a half times my money so that's kind of what I did you know when I was going through this just looking at what I can, there's a Debbie Reynolds beat up, but you know, I'll throw that in a two dollar box and that'll sell, I'm sure. There's a 1940 play ball, pretty nice shape on this one. Says I paid four dollars for it, you know, that's a 15 to 20 dollar card, probably. There's another 40 play ball, Johnny Cooney, four bucks on that one. You know, these are nice shape. I can't complain about that. 15 to 20 on that, I think. Oddball stuff here. 61 Fleer. Post. Jello. Etc. Alright, so that 
there's a lot more. You know, I did price probably 100 of these cards, but I got 1,300 more to go from this, just that port. So that port was $2,500, like I said. Here's some more play balls. 1940. 40s are harder to find. Billy Jurgis. Buddy Hassett. And they're a pretty nice shape. So it says I paid four, eight, six, sixty-three. More vintage football. And all that stuff does well, all that vintage football, but you know it's not really worth sending it if you're not gonna really make any money on it. Bunch of Star Wars stuff from the 77 top set. I think that stuff is kind of undervalued in my opinion. Especially the stickers. So let's... Go to the next page here. Scroll all the way down. One more page of this. I'll try to get to the next port here. Take a minute to load. So more 55 football. There's 54 in there. There's a bunch of 52 Bowmans, which are hard to find, and they're pretty expensive, really. So let me get to the next port I purchased. which begins right here this is from the path here's like a jerry kramer here from the passport a pretty nice card there okay so the next port is this one it was all goody cards 33 goody so somebody was working on the set it seems they probably just had you know we're done with it and i bought their port i think they the total was around, if I bought them individually, it was around 3500 I paid 1000 for all of them. And I think there was around 70 goody cards, or 80 maybe. And I think it ended up being like $12 a card, basically. So we see here 33. There's an example of one here, Tony Piet. Pretty nice card there, but... You know, some were pretty rough and some were pretty nice. You know, some had some staining and stuff like that. But there were the reason why I bought it was there was two Mickey Cochran's. So here's one here. And this is a pretty decent card in decent shape, I should say. It says I paid 80 for it. Two up there now, 180 to 300, I think. I think 170 is probably reasonable, 160, 170, so about double what I paid. But, you know, some, like I said, some were rougher, some were nicer, but, you know, these cards are just extremely difficult to find. There's one with some paper loss. You know, I what I think is I'll, I'll get double my money on these, but it it's going to take quite a while for me to get my money back. Here's a nice Charlie Grimm. This is probably a $40 card right there. And I paid 20 So we're going to look to hopefully double, I think no problem, double my money over time. Honestly, it might, be, it might take me two years to do this. However, I'm looking at a longer time period. I know some people like to flip, you know, as quick as possible. Here's a Ted Lyons rookie card. It's rough, but Goody Hall of Fame rookie it says thirty six dollars. Probably a eighty dollar card, seventy five. But anyways, I what I wanted to do. So the last time I showed my dashboard, I think I had eight grand in there. I spent like five this past January. I've just been buying individual cards, but I felt like it's probably more efficient for me to go in and try to find some ports to buy. Now, most ports aren't worth buying, like I said, but um, 
you know, I just, I wanted to build my inventory up. And look, if we look at, I probably added 3,000 cards. I think I was around 6,000 items in my inventory. Now I got to go, go and price all this stuff, which is going to be time consuming. But, you know, hopefully this, this year I'll have 20,000 plus cards in here. And I'm looking at buying individual cards to flip. And here's some of those cards from that first port I bought here. If we took a take a look in the middle here, it's I bought for three cents. It sold for less than one cent. I don't know how they figure that out, but you know, again, I'm just trying to unload that stuff, and you know, I don't really need that kind of stuff in my inventory. It's not doing me any good. Um, but we really were able to upgrade the account here quite a bit. We had some nice vintage stuff coming in and some lower price stuff that I think will do well. So let's keep an eye on this, you know, 5,000 spent this month. As you guys have seen, I've been sending a whole bunch of stuff back to me. I've had thousands of cards come in. You guys check out my last previous videos on this past week's pickups. I have a couple videos where I have, you know, 500 plus cards coming in from ComC. I got another shipment coming in i have another a whole bunch of cards built up that i'll have sent to me and i'll make videos on those but hopefully you guys learned you know picked up some information on this video that i just showed i'll go through some more stuff like this like looking if you're starting with a small account you know maybe only a hundred dollars or whatever because what i'll do so like this mike trout here you know, I bought for $1.49. I sold it for $2.50. It was just something I was going through. I was looking for stuff to buy to sell at shows. But I also look while I'm doing that, is there stuff that I can flip real real quick or real easily? So I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm looking to flip for the long haul. And also if things sell right away, if I think something's going to sell right away, you know, I'll make a dollar on it that money comes right up to my account here and then I can use it to you know hopefully buy another port that's worth getting or you know just buy stuff put put the money right back in so I'm not looking to take anything out I'm looking to just get stuff I'm gonna sell in person at shows and increase my inventory so hopefully we can get this inventory number here we can get it to at least double this year. That was one of my goals for last year, but you know, with the pandemic, everything got way behind. I wasn't really able to send anything in. All their stuff was just, Com C was just, it could not keep up. If you sent anything in, it took six months or whatever. It took a long, long time. I think it was at least six months if you sent in anything for them to process it for them to send you anything back. But anyways, um, I'll talk about more of um, how to buy and sell, just quick flips or whatever. You know, this was just specifically the ports I bought. This And those three ports were this past week, and it was, you know, around, it was almost $5,000 for those, or 4000 I should say, um, for those. But I've spent, you know, five grand this month just trying to build up my inventory and get stuff sent to me to sell at shows as well. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope, like I said, I hope you guys learned something from this. I'll have more stuff coming up similar to this. And stay tuned. Please like and subscribe and take care of yourselves.